hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, hi. Yeah, sorry I'm late. The uh, My meeting ran over and then my computer decided it needed to update Zoom. So, uh, yeah, we should have a few minutes anyway. I, I, hopefully nobody has this room booked after one o'clock. Yeah. Um, Close the window. Yeah, yeah, sure. How have you been getting on? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Have you been? Uh, what have you been doing for the project? You've been you've been reading at the moment, or? Yeah, I reading some paper, but I don't think it's very useful. No. Why? What papers are you reading? Some about lastly, but. About what, sorry? About the rough wave. Ah, okay, about rogue waves. Yeah, okay, so I think in terms of your literature review, you don't need to know everything about every type of rogue wave formation. I think what you need to do is be able to show two main things. Um, one is that there's literature show it, discussing how spatially varying currents can induce rogue waves. So you just want some papers in order to support the statement that you make, which is spatially variable currents can induce rogue waves. Um, okay. Then the second part I would say was that you then want to have some papers that show some understanding of how the current affects the waves. So how it modifies the wavelengths, how it modifies the wave heights, how it modifies the directions. And with those three things, you can then start to understand how the waves, when they interact with a spatially varying current field, start to change height, start to change length, start to change directions, and how that then can give a, a, like a constructive interference and focusing of waves to create very large waves. So that I think in terms of the physical mechanisms, those are the main two things that you need to be able to include. Um, in terms of the other reading, I think most of my literature would then be about, you know, why is this important? So off, thinking about offshore systems, offshore wind turbines, oil and gas, vessels, etc. And how, um, you know, how this has, how this could have a big impact on, on, uh, on design of systems and how this has a big impact on failure of systems. And unfortunately, uh, loss of life for there's been various incidents when people have died because of, because of rogue waves and they've been attributed to rogue waves vessel capsizing is probably the main one so if you can if you can include that as your literature review along with some understanding of the you know the, the theory that you're going to use so the paper that you're going to use you don't need to understand it all but the paper that's referenced in the in the code then i think that's the main thing okay, okay so you don't need to understand absolutely everything but you need to be able to tell a good story yeah so why a rogue wave is important the fact that rogue waves are uh, can be induced by currents and and how that happens and then you can go on to then your project which is using new theory to be able to explore this problem uh, a bit more um and what should i do for the methodology so yeah you so you don't you oh, you mean for the project plan and proposal yeah so the methodology is not marked, but I would certainly make a start on it. So you have a, you should have a clear set of aims and objectives now for your project. And the methodology should allow you to achieve all of those objectives. So you need enough detail in there to show how you're going to start from square one, which is, you know, don't understand, you don't not read anything about waves and you've not done any of the modeling all the way through to what are your model outputs going to tell you about rogue wave formation. So, yeah, it doesn't need to be perfect. You don't need to have everything in there. But you could think about the sort of, a lot of your project, once you've got everything up and running, which we can talk about in a moment, is going to be around what cases you run and how you interpret those outputs. Okay, so what sensitivity are you going to do to understand the role of different types of varying currents and different types of waves, and how does that affect? How do you build up the total understanding? So I, I have ideas how I would do it. 
Um, but it's good for you to ever think through how you would approach approach those and then interpret the output. So one of the limitations of the theory that you have is that you don't really model wave heights as such. You're modeling wave rays. So you're modeling basically like, like the instantaneous direction of the waves. If they start from here, what's the path they take through this current? If I start from here, I might have a different path. And when you find that you end up with rays that are colliding, that's when you're going to have big wave heights. So the way that the in the codes that we can look at how large the waves are is basically th through like a ray density. So you can compute the density of rays in in regions, and that's how we're gonna and we're gonna try and equate that to wave height. Um, so you know these are the sort of specifics that will be in your methodology. You know I'm gonna I'm gonna design some um, some jet like profiles. I'm gonna design some prof thing. You know what sort of profiles are you interested in? So, you know, how, currents can affect waves in different ways. What, what about um, what sort of shapes of the currents are realistic, and what sort of shapes, uh, simplified shapes, might you explore? And then what? Is, what then? Once I have an interesting current, like a jet, for example, would be an obvious one. Um, then what do I do? What I would say you do is you'd then have waves of different directions different incident directions relative to that jet. And you'd have waves of different frequencies relative to that jet because they'll be modified differently by the current. The final thing is then how strong is that jet relative to my wave speeds? Because if if, if, the, if the, the, the magnitude of the current is very strong relative to the waves, they're going to affect the waves a lot. If the value of the current is really insignificant, that doesn't matter. So thinking about the parameter space that you want to explore, um, I think would be a nice thing to start thinking about um and what sort of outputs are you going to how are you going to then interpret those outputs so i think that's through this ray density so you can explore peak ray densities over incident densities or something like this um as a function of the, the current magnitudes the current profiles and the wave the wave inputs um so that's how i would think about it and then you can have a think whether or not you you try and stay with sort of simplified shapes or whether or not you try and move to something a bit more realistic. But we need to think about where we're going to get data from for that if you do want to do that. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's fine enough, you know, enough to start thinking about your methodology. Um, the other side is whether or not, um, yeah, have, have you tried to install the uh, uh, Python yet? I started trying to use the code and have some problem with the installation, but I think I should be able to overcome it. Okay, well, yeah, have a, have a try for another few days, yeah. and if if you're still stuck, let me know because I can't remember how I did it now, but I have successfully done it on a couple of computers. So if I remember, if I have a look again. If you let me know you haven't figured it out in a week or two, um, I'll then figure out how I did it, and we can do it the same way. Are you trying to use um, Jupyter Notebook? Uh, I tried to. Not not yet, but I, I will try. Okay, um, that sounds good. Give it a go, um, and if you're still stuck, we can we can sort it out. I'm very anxious about this project proposal. Yeah, no, don't I be. I have a lot of deadline. OK. Yes. It's only 5%. Yes. It's not huge. Um, make sure you've got a good gun chart. Make sure it's a bit it's a bit clearer what your aims, objectives are, what tasks that are then in your plan you need to have to achieve those objectives, and you're fine. You know, I think you, your project is very well defined. Uh, some projects are very open. There's lots of things to figure out. There's loads of options. For you, I think it's it's quite well defined. We know the code we're using. We know the sort of parameters we're going to be exploring. We know how we're going to interpret the outputs. And we know why we're doing all of these things, because rogue waves are important and currents can create them. So if you can manage to get that clearly down, I think you've got a really easy plan and a really easy uh, proposal to write. 
Um, so as long as you have that order correct and you you make that really clear why you're doing these things, then then it's fine. But you know, we um, feel free to email me if you want some input. Okay. I'm happy to have a quick look. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, somebody's waiting outside the room, so I'm going to have to go. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry I was late today. I was hoping we could continue discussions, but I'm going to have to go now. Okay. Um, but feel free to drop me an email. We can continue discussions over over email as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Take care. And yeah, please email me if you're still stuck. Yeah. Have a nice day. Yeah, yeah, you too. Bye.